Hello my soccer gamers, let's do this quick to reduce the amount of pain. I decided to not wear any team from the uh, top half. I wear some Doria, beautiful jersey. They say it's the most beautiful jersey in soccer, so it deserves to be worn. I agree, really love this one. <sighs> Serie A, we'll start right with it and as I say, quick. Make it painless. Roma, uh, my second favorite team, had a really bad showing uh, against Bologna. Orsolini already taken an early lead, then uh, own goal gives Roma the equal. As you think, hmm, might be something going, but a certain Musa Barrow had something serious to say against it with a shot that was deflected. So it looked a really great curl curling shot, but it, uh, it was got a great shot because it was deflected. Makes it 2-1 at the half. Roma tries to get something going, but better again. Makes it 3-1 uh, and was about to become a famous win for Bologna. Mkhitaryan pulls one back, but then yeah, Roma shot, shot himself in the foot with a red card for Cristante. Could not really find the equalizer, although they were close. But Roma, um, it's a so and so season for them. I saw also Fiorentina Atalanta, where Atalanta controlled most of the game, but Fiorentina through Chiesa took the lead. It was a wicked shot by um, uh, Chiesa. And Atalanta needed to show something, and they did. They reacted to it um, with Gomez, uh, you know. Pulling the strings and Duban Zapata getting the early equalizer in the 49th. And then another uh, kind of weird job by Malo Malinowski. I cannot say that I can absolve the goalkeeper from any uh, fault there. Makes it 2-1 Atalanta and that was it. Fiorentina is not coming back. Atalanta back on the winning, winning track. And kind of taking immediate advantage of what Roma messed up earlier. Didn't see anything from Torino Sampdoria, but hey, Sampdoria is 3 1 uh, winners. Let's quickly see who scored the goals for them. Ramirez, 2, and Gagliarella with a penalty late on, deepening the worries of uh, Torino, who took actually the lead in that game. Then the first big one Verona against Juventus. Uh, I actually saw the first 60 minutes or so and then uh, actually 65 minutes then I, I just said I'm gonna take uh, too tired to con 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 continue because I was really gearing up for the big Sunday um, but the funniest thing seen at the beginning was when Dybala walked up there, you know, he's greeting everyone. First he wants to walk through the wrong bench. I told him, there's the Juve bench. Then he wants to sit down and he wants to sit down next to Buffon, but there was no seat anymore. So he had to go another way. Anyway, Verona was very well in that game, I have to say. Uh, they, and they played the third game in a row where I think you can see that this is a really well coached team. Not an exciting team, but really well coached and really dangerous. And I think they will challenge for Europe this season. Uh, they had a goal disallowed early on uh, through VAR, probably all right. Although uh, the I actually wanted to see Verona um, score that goal. And mainly because I'm reading A Season with Verona again. This is just such a fun book to read. Uh, although I have to say, now with a few, ten, about 10 years distance uh, and with the current happenings, some of the stuff that he's writing is not that um, easy reading anymore. But you know, I still can rec recommend this book. It's a very interesting one. Uh, Douglas Costa gets the biggest chance for Juventus running through midfield unchallenged and then putting the ball at the bar. Ronaldo had two big chances uh, early on. I think he hit once the post, no, actually three. Hit the post once, then he shot wide and um, had also a header that went wide. So um, while I thought that Verona had a bit more of the game, Juve was definitely more dangerous. And uh, I only expected that you will score once and then the game is over. And exactly that seemingly happened because in the 65th minute, Ronaldo suddenly is alone on goal after a nice uh, pass by Bentancur. He can run, he gets rid of the defender, uh, steady himself, takes a shot, makes it 1 0. Off the TV goes, you will win. I turn on. What? Verona actually turned it around. 
Borini with a really nice shot in the 76 gets the equalizer and then um, Verona seemingly hit the bar uh, after a corner it was really for me then suddenly the referee showing something and Bonucci touched it with the hand and it was not to be denied uh, Pazzini in the 86 can convert the penalty to give Verona a 2-1 win over Juve that is something I did not expect I told my colleagues that I thought that Verona might be dangerous, but now they will play against Juve. They will lose that one. No, they won that one. And while I'm not happy for Milan uh, in that way, I was actually very happy all over because this meant that the championship will get some more excitement. And I actually like it when a Verona team is also playing well in them. Spalsa Seola won 2, didn't see much. Brescia gets a 1-1 against Udine. I saw uh, quite some of Napoli against Lecce. That was an interesting game. I really have to have to, have to say Lecce had uh, the lead uh, early on in the first half through La Padula in the 29th. Milik very quickly gets an equalizer early in the second half. They are storming forward. You thought they will turn this game around. It was very uh, a lot of um, uh, spectators there. But La Padula from a, a counter deck makes it 2-1 for Lecce and that put a dent in Napoli's hopes. You could see that they're a little bit losing their countenance there. And then Mancoso with a free kick that probably best free, free free kick of the weekend. Second best. Yeah, we'll see. It was a really nice free kick. This one went at least went in. Uh, makes it 3-1. Karikon can put one back. They had the chance to make it 3-3, but uh was a well-worked win by Lecce. And Lecce seemingly only makes points against the big boys. Genoa wins against Caleri 1-0. Lazio gets a laborious win. Casedo scoring in the 30th, I think. Around the third, 30th for Lazio. Um, penalty for uh, Parma was not even looked at the war uh, in, at, at VAR. 41st he scored but yeah uh, Lazio gets the win and kind of puts on the pressure again and then the Milan Derby <sighs> what can I say it was a game of two halves uh, I'm still not over this loss too to be honest Milan wonderful first half had a well-deserved tunnel lead Jalnoglu made it I should have even scored early, early on 3-0 there was a big chance for uh, for Inter there as well but Milan completely dominated Inter and I don't know what happened in the second half. Five minutes, it seems like the game is calm da, 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 and then yeah, Brozovic scores and all hell breaks loose. Inter finds the second gear, second, third, fourth gear. <sighs> yeah, let's put it that way. In a game that neutrals would say where was very entertaining, Inter wins uh, uh, Derby 4-2. Uh, I can't talk more about it. I have to say that I found the choreography is nice, but nothing really. Uh, I found the ones from the first derby much, much better, personally. So in the table, let's move on. I don't want to talk about this game. I... Just saying. I think as a Milan fan, I would be much happier if many games would have ended after 45 minutes. Milan has, has this in them that they just... Throw away games. Ah. Yeah. Inter takes top spot. And I was not going to put an Inter jersey on today. Even them taking top spot. We level with Juventus 54. And we have Lazio with a point back. That's, that's definitely a three horse race. And we have next week Lazio against Inter. No, I'm not going to say it. But this is a big matchup. Atalanta moves in fourth spot, and I think those four will probably be at the end. Uh, we have then Roma in Europa League spot, Hellas is there, uh, Bologna, Galli, Parma, Milan, I would say even Napoli can well challenge for your European spots. Uh, I know it's a hard cut to make it at Sassuolo, but I just don't quite believe it yet. And if you look at relegation zone, I think Sampdoria's win was a vital, Lecce also a vital win. It, you get some distance. It's three points. Game of pressure spell really don't look well. Let's go to France because there was some interesting stuff ha ha happening too. Uh, running through the results, Lille gets a 2 0 win at Angers. Marseille, kind of laborious win, 1 0 over uh, Toulouse. 
Dijon, Nantes, 3-3, exciting. Uh, Bordeaux gets a 2-1 win at Metz, Rennes, Brest, uh, Breton, Derby, and goalless. Uh, what else? Montpellier beat Saint Etienne, 1-0, and then the big one, PSG against Lyon. Yeah, leaving out some results. You can read to yourself, I would say. Uh, that game, yeah, what, <laughs> what can I say? Have you all seen the third goal? Uh, PSG was up rather quick uh, early on the second half, 3-0. Di Maria, who is again in a wonderful form, and Mbappé make it 2-0. If you haven't seen the 3-0, find a video. It's the... How to say? I have never seen two teams combine so well to make a wonderful goal. Well, it was an own goal. Mbappé plays a wonderful ball to Draxler. Draxler um, runs down, plays the ball in a uh, Lyon defender, plays it on, kind of uh, towards the goal line, but uh, really not very motivated. Dr Draxler get, gets again, plays it back, and Marcel really nicely finishes off. Makes it for 3-0. Uh, I cannot describe it. you got to see it. It's slapstick comedy. But within 10 minutes of that goal, or 12 minutes, Lyon had a 3-2 and it actually was exciting. Cavani comes on and after a wonderful assist again by Maria, Di Maria, who sees Cavani. Cavani gets his 199th goal for PSG. Uh, celebrations everywhere and everyone, I think, wants to get him to 200 for PSG. Uh, that makes me, I really liked like Cavani uh, a lot. So I was quite happy to see that and all that means now is that in the table PSG uh, is again still quite clear Marseille is still strong but you know it's 12 points Rennes drop points Lille is moving up there Montpellier is uh, down there uh, is also in the mix maybe Strasbourg can get in there uh, you shouldn't again France is so tight I think up until Nantes who now suddenly find himself in 12th spot those teams have a serious chance to make it to Europe next uh, season. Then it's kind of a little bit of a dead zone. Um, Mets looks endangered. Maybe Saint Etienne too. Let's see. Uh, but you know, it's so tight. But um, Dijon, Nîmes for relegation point. Maybe Mets and then Amien to lose uh, look like they will be going down. In Turkey, we also had. A uh, big matchup. We have a Monday game. I'm sorry uh, that I don't get in that. We had a one versus two a match of receiver spore against Bajakshi, a place 1-1, one, one, uh, which actually allowed Trapson Spore to take advantage of that with a 2-0. And also Fenerbahce, Alanya Spore, only 1-1. One, one. It was also uh, kind of high on the table. Galatasaray beats, gets a win, also helps the, them move up as does Bajiktas. A little bit. So if we look in the table now, Sivaspor still on top, but now Trapsonspor leapfrogged Bajakshi here. And it looks like a, a five-way race. I, we could for probably well, even six-way race for Fenerbahce. We're 42, 41, 40, 39, 39, 38. So six-way race to for the title. It's very tight. Um, as I said last week, I still expect the top three to rise above. But there's a lot to play for, I think, in Turkey this uh, season. And finally, let's finish with Greece, where Pauk gets a 4-0 win at OFI. Um, Olympiakos 1-0 over Tromitos, and Ajax stops Panathinaikos in its track. Panathinaikos already lost uh, during the midweek in the Greek Cup to Pauk. Now they lose to Ajax, which more or less means in a table that now Olympiakos and Pauk are still... This is the head-to-head -head, the race for the title. Ajax, a little bit uh, cushion over Panathinaikos, but also it seems that those two will finish in three and four, and then it's Aris. Well, that was it for my Southern European re uh, review. Focus on Serie A, of course. I hope I will not be as depressed as I was uh, after this Sunday. Soccer-wise, ever in this season again. One thing I have to say what I don't, don't like is that Many of the big games in Italy happen quite early in the season. We have now Lazio Inter coming up. Uh, Juve Inter is also not too far from far away. And then we have this extended run towards the back. So I wish it was a little bit uh, more spaced out. Not have that many great games already in February. And then we have to wait out the season. I, I would like to have this towards the end of the season. 
Anyway, let me know what you thought about the games that I talked talked about. Would you agree with my assessments? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.